Hallelujah. The Lord is good, and it's good to be in his house. God incarnate, Jesus Christ, you brought color into the world, turned darkness into light, Prince of Peace, Emmanuel, you brought color into the world. God in man to dwell. Oh, and let the angels sing. Oh, and let the slave bells ring. All because heaven has come. Heaven has come to earth. Oh, let his people praise for the day that Christmas came. All Jesus has come, Jesus has come to us, the day that Christmas came, Son of God, of whom the scriptures tell, you brought color into the world, and ransomed Israel, humble Son, you brought color into the world, bright and holy one, and let the angels sing, oh, and let the sleigh bells ring, all because heaven has come, heaven has come to earth, oh, let us be. Jesus has come, Jesus has come to us, the day that Christmas came, 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 the day that Christmas came. The day that Christmas came. oh and let the angels sing, oh and let the slain bells ring all because heaven has come heaven has come to earth oh let us be full praise for the day that Christmas came all because Jesus has come Jesus has come to us the day that Christmas came the day that Christmas came. The Christmas came. Yeah, the day that Christmas came. <laughs> Amen, amen. Amen. Good to see everybody. Charlie, I see you back there. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, Lisa. I see you back there. I see you. Merry Christmas. Sorry for startling everybody this morning. Just check and see if you're awake. You guys passed.
First things first this morning, we want to greet all our first time visitors or guests if you're here. Those that are online, those that are in the building, we have a card for those that are online. Actually, you'll see a button you can push and fill that out. Please do that. Record your visit on this Christmas Sunday. But if you're here and this is your very first time, would you raise your hand up high? We want to get your card just to fill out anyone like that. Amen. Amen. Ushers be looking for ones coming in. How many know we had a busy week this week? We did. Tuesday, Tuesday night, we finished up a class in Explore Nations on prayer. How many know that prayer is an important thing? Amen. It is. It is. Now, understand, that was the end of that class. Our next class in Explore Nations, that's our Bible school, it actually starts January 4th. And that class is really... Uh, going to be a class on finance, and Jeff Taylor's going to teach that, right? So I just really want to encourage you, see Pastor Jordan, see Pastor Deborah on that. That's going to be a super, super good class. Now, when we had a board meeting last week, and so we just really were talking about things here, but also he's talking about this class. And so really, really, I'm just giving you a hint here. You might want to see him on that. That's going to be a great class. Also, Wednesday, we had our One Church, One Day Prayer. Uh, we started in the morning with our Everyman Harvest Leaders, 6 a.m. Zoom call. And then we ended up in the evening doing mid-work, midweek prayer. It was awesome, guys. All those that participated, thank you for joining us on that. <clears throat> also, on Friday, how many were able to come to the Helps Ministry Christmas Party? Let me tell you, there's over 70 here. And, man, we had a good time. We always do the White Elephant Gift. When you do white elephant gifts with people, you find out a lot about people. They'll steal your stuff. Some will. Anyway, it was fun. Lots and lots of fun. And then uh, yesterday, we, of course, we've been doing our Christmas program practices with the kids. We went Christmas caroling last night, guys. We probably had 30 plus with just, you know, our momentum group, our 2030 group, and then also our Axe Youth group. And we loaded up both vans, had another vehicle. <clears throat> we just went and hit diff different houses of people in this church. And we were, uh, and also Vicky said, hey, there's a gentleman I know he would love if you came. Kind of a last minute addition. We sang at his house, right? Well, some neighbors down the street, you saw them, they heard us. And so they were kind of looking out and standing in the yard. So we just, when we got done, went down to their house. <laughs> Amen. So we had a really, really good time on that, so. Also, guys, downstairs on the angel tree, just want to remind you all the gifts are due today on the angel tree. So it, you say, Pastor, oh, I forgot I didn't bring it. We'll bring it tonight. We have Christmas program tonight. Starts at 630. Amen. Probably get here about six, maybe about 615. Right. You can fellowship, whatever. We're going to have a really good time. Yeah, we've got a. Uh, We've got, we've been working on the play. It's a superhero play. You guys don't want to miss it. You can have a great time. Others will be involved with that. Also, Wednesday evening, we're going to have our candlelight service this Wednesday. Okay, the 22nd. So, if you can, we'd like you to come. Bring somebody. We're going to have a good time there. And also, we're also going to start the new year in, just uh, in prayer from 6 to 8 p.m. on New Year's uh, Eve. Okay, and then afterwards, the youth is going to actually have a party till after midnight. We're going to usher it in quick. I didn't get to see him just before he came out, guys. So, <laughs> so anyway, hey, did you tell him about the program tonight? I tell you what, it's going to be super good. Guys, we have got the best group of kids ever this year. Okay, and, and they have been working hard on this program and big people. Uh, I've got Pastor Brian and... Sam and Paul and Pastor Jared that are also going to be in it. It's going to be really good, okay? You do not, not, not want to miss. It starts at 6.30, but get here early to get seats, okay? And uh, kids, in kids' church, parents of kids, in children's church that are in the play, the cast members, you guys need to have your kids here uh, at like uh, 5.50, so that we can get all, because this year we've got, you know, all that feedback you're hearing. They have been working hard on the sound and we have eight new mics and it's kind of messing with things. So I apologize for any feedback you guys experienced. Thankfully, I was out of the sanctuary. But anyway, so this is the deal is they are, are fidgeting with that and getting that all in order for a really awesome program where you can actually hear the kids. So. 
Come pray up. Come bring friends because they'll have opportunity to get saved tonight. Amen. Hey, also, just some upcoming. Upcoming, we're going to have a January 3rd through the 7th, starting the new year with just a fasting time. If you'd like to be involved with that, we'll be talking about that as it comes. It's just a time where, how many know that fasting doesn't change God? He's the same before you start, same while you're fasting. He's the same when you get done. He didn't change, but it does change you. It opens you up. Amen. We'll talk a little bit more about that, but that's coming up. Also, gentlemen, there's a men's breakfast coming up Saturday, January 8th. Well, you'll hear more about that. It's uh, from 9 to 11 a.m. Got some special speakers coming in. How many, uh, how many have heard of Highland Construction? Ever heard of Highland Construction? How many know Dave Highland? You know, he, he's, he's the, the leader, the founder of that. And uh, he's going to be speaking at our men's breakfast. And gentlemen, you really want to put it on your calendar to come. He's going to share his own testimony, but he had an encounter with God about a year ago. You know, he's probably 70 some years old, but God just really woke him up on some things concerning men in this community. Men in this community. And man, he has been on it, right? And we've just partnered with him as other churches are partnering with partnering with him and there you uh, know we'll talk about this in january but there's a february meeting coming up at willamette christian center and it's it's a citywide meeting for every man in every church it's going to be an awesome time we'll talk more about that it's coming up amen hey if you got your bibles open them up to mark chapter 10 you know we've just been talking about this rich young ruler for the last few weeks just during our offering time and I, just that encounter that Jesus had with him. How many know that Jesus, you could almost always count on him to do the non-religious thing? You say, well, Pastor, how do you know when it's the non-religious thing? Because it makes all the religious people mad. You know what I mean? All the people that think you should act a certain way and say certain things and you should do this and you should do that. Well, he didn't do any of that. He was just Jesus, right? And so this rich young ruler comes up, falls down at his feet, says, hey, here was the question, what must I do to inherit eternal life, right? Well, that was the question. And then the Lord said, you know the commandments. You know, gave him all the commandments to do. And the guy said, I've done these from my youth. The Lord looked at him, loved him, said, you lack one thing. Go sell what you have, give it to the poor. And then this guy walked away. And then Jesus made the statement. We've gone over this, made the statement. It's difficult. It's difficult for rich people. To, and here's what Jesus said. He's, he said to enter the kingdom of God. Wow. And then they're shocked. And then he says, no, no, it's tough for those that trust in riches to enter the kingdom of God. Now, look at verse, uh, see where I want to go here this morning. Yeah, look at verse 26. We're going to read down from there. They were greatly astonished, saying among themselves, who then can what? So they go back to the question. This guy's looking for eternal life. And Jesus said, no, it's difficult, difficult to trust in riches and enter the kingdom of God. And they said, who could be saved? Now look what Jesus said. I love this. Jesus looked at them and said, with men, it's what? You know that it's impossible for you to get saved and get eternal life without Jesus? Absolutely impossible. Yeah, Pastor, but I, I'm a pretty good rule keeper. Good for you. Good for you. But that's not, Jesus said that's not how it works. Not how it works. No, he said this. It's impossible with men, but not with God. For all things are possible with God. Right? Jesus is saying, listen, there's a possibility that I want to operate in your life in the impossible. Here's what Oral Roberts said one time. He said, if you want to, if you want to actually do the impossible, you got to learn to see the invisible. Oh, that was a great statement because that's, that's what Moses did. It says he saw him with the eyes of faith. He saw him. And did Moses do the impossible? Absolutely did. Well, he wants us to do the impossible. But in order to do that, you have to learn to see the invisible. How do you do that? Well, you got to connect with God. Amen. You got to connect with God. See, now we're going to get into this next week. But Peter, all of a sudden, you know, the Lord... He saw what the, what the Lord asked this guy to sell everything and, and to follow me and do all this. And Peter's like, wow, wait a minute. We've left everything to follow you. 
One translation in a, a different gospel than the one we're reading, it says, what's in it for us? Wouldn't that have been a really good place for the Lord to rebuke him? What do you mean, what's in it for us? Selfish Peter. That's not, but the Lord never did. He never did. What's he doing? He's trying to teach everybody on the planet that God is number one. He's number one. He's got to be first in everything. First in your heart, concerning your finance, concerning your faith, concerning everything. Right? The rich young ruler is a great reflection of someone who thought they had everything in line with God. And then found out Jesus sent him away with one sentence. Wow. What just happened? Listen, everybody say heart adjustment. How, how many have ever been to the chiropractor? Raise your hand. You ever been to the chiropractor? How, how many... When you go to the chiropractor, you have a great anticipation, and then all of a sudden you get on the table, and when he's done, it's like, oh, your muscles are relaxing. How many know he did not give you a backbone? He did not install anything. What did he do? He adjusted. We have everything we need, but a lot of times we need to be adjusted. That rich young ruler, he had everything he needed. He was already doing the commandments. He just needed to be adjusted. How many have ever been to the chiropractor to get an adjustment and it didn't adjust? You ever been there? How many know that's not fun? <laughs> See, this guy, the reason he didn't adjust is because in his heart he didn't want to adjust. He didn't want to adjust. And the Lord says, listen, you only lack one thing. And then he gives him five things to do. He wouldn't do it. But then Jesus said, listen, with, with man, this whole salvation thing with man, it's impossible with man. With God, all things are possible. Amen. If you need an envelope, raise up your hand. They will get you one. God is good. Amen. They're going to pull up on the screen here. There's different ways. You that are watching online, different ways. You that are here, different ways to give. There you go. In the house, we're going to have offering buckets. They're going to go by here a little bit also in the back. You know, we have a a box in the back you can give into if you'd like to do it that way. Or you're going to see people, you know, families and individuals come up just as part of their worship. You'll see them doing that. But also, give it online, text to give. I don't know how good you could see that, but can you see that? Can you guys see that? Yeah, can you see good enough? Okay. And then just give by mail if you'd like to do that. Got a lock box out there. Isn't it, isn't it good to be able to get involved with God in your finance? That may, you may have never heard anybody say that before. I, I don't know if that's good or not. Oh, absolutely good. How many have already found out that's good? You've proved it. Raise your hand. Just look around. There's people that's proved it. You know, you know my dad was a, a master on that. He got involved early, found out. That's God said, I'm in. But, you know, a lot of his friends weren't in. He didn't care. Why? Because it's between him and God. And man, I had the privilege of being raised in that house with my mom and my dad. I saw some stuff, guys. I saw some stuff. And then Kelly and I, since we have been married, we just made the decision, now we're going to put God first. We saw some stuff. Him involved supernaturally. That's what you're doing is you're just inviting him. Now, here's what you don't do. You don't give to make God love you. God will love you whether you give anything or not. But what you're doing when you obey in any area like that, you're inviting him into that part of your life. Amen? You got something you want to share with us? There's been a lot of unusual ways he's blessed us over the years, you know. Uh, one time we found some money on the ground at a parking lot. We needed some money. And, you know, usually you find a one or some dimes. Or, you know, you find something like that. Maybe if you find something. This was like, I think, 26 to 30 some bucks, you know. And I was like, Wow. So I took it into the store, and we happened to have a friend that works at that store. And I took it in, and he responded very unusually. He just was kind of cold with me. He didn't even want to talk to me. And I was like, I'm trying to turn this in. Somebody dropped this outside, you know. He's like, listen, the store policy is if anybody turns money in from the parking lot, we just put it in our till. We don't return it to anybody. He said, I don't even know what you're saying to me. <laughs> <laughs> and so he walked off. He's like, okay, okay. That particular store was like that. So um, God has done a lot of good things for us. He had people show up. With, you know, our, we had a neighbor years ago that would find sales at Winco and, and buy 
bags of groceries and, and then just come bring us a few groceries, bags of them. She would, you know, God used some unusual sources and he's still working for us. And it's an adventure. It's an adventure when you trust God like that. He, I mean, I hear, you know, I'm seeing those sweet girls smile at me. They've had so many adventures already because they've trusted God, Michael and Leanne. You know, there's so many people that have had adventures. I, I, who's had an adventure in God where he provided for you? Raise your hand and wave it around. God is so good, right? Everyone say, God, you're good. Yes, he is. And he's good this year. He's good in 2022. Amen. Things are shifting for the better. I know it looks scary, but it's, that's all lying vanity. Okay. It's shifting for the better for us. Hey, also, I just wanted to greet someone. I don't know if you did or not. We just want to greet Adriana. Honey, thank you for showing up and, and being a part of our church service. And also Marianne Pomerlo. And also, uh, mom, if you're here watching hi and all the all the other people that are online paul and sherry lynn um all the other people that are watching online that couldn't come today we just want to let you know we love you and you're part of our family okay we love you and uh, we're sorry we couldn't christmas carol to you yesterday some of you we couldn't go to um but we just want to let you know god's at work and he's going to help you okay and this is a blessed christmas so receive God's heart for you. He's going to shift and do some good things. Okay. Amen. 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 First worship team come. You guys ready to worship God? Yeah. I know his birthday is not until Saturday, but man, isn't it good to get the party started early? <laughs> Amen. 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 Stand to your feet if you would. He's just so good. <clears throat> just receive from him this morning. How many know Jesus? He likes giving gifts just on his birthday. Go ahead, guys, when you're ready. Mm -hmm. Amen. We're going to jump right in and worship the Lord. This is my favorite time of year, my favorite season. Because the people who were in darkness have seen a great light. Amen. So we're going to... We're going to sing, we're going to celebrate, we're going to give God the glory and the praise because he deserves it. He's worthy. The one who loves us came for us.
Thank you for Jesus this morning. He is the gift to the world. So grateful. So grateful, God. Help us to receive all that you have provided for us in Jesus. You know, I felt like the Lord said that as we head into this next year, one of the things he's doing for the church, not just our church, but the church, is he's having the Holy Ghost school of how to receive from God. The Holy Spirit school on how to receive from God. God, teach us. Teach us as we head into this new year. Lord, it's about your plan and your purpose and the things that you've had planned before the foundations of the world. Lord, you're coming into a finishing time. I pray for myself, for my wife, my family, for our staff, for this church, everybody watching. Father, we want to do and be your best. And Lord, you have such a plan that no one will ever be disappointed. We so thank you for it in Jesus' name. And everyone that believes in, man, you may be seated. Aren't you glad he's got a plan? How many know that there's other voices out there that try to make it sound like this is just all about chaos and, and, and it's just not going to turn out well? How many here, we're going to have a, a moment of honesty here. How many here, when they gave you book reports, you just read the end of the book and did the report? Never really read the book. Right? <laughs> a little late, Sarah, sorry. But when you did, if you were the one that did read the book, you, of course, you got more out of it. But I read the book. I know what God said concerning end times. You know, Understand that, that things are cranking up and things are happening, but God's got a plan. But it's receiving from God, receiving his plan. We've been talking about the last couple of weeks, just the fullness of times. We're in it right now. <clears throat> you should be really excited that you're born in these days. You could have been born anytime, but you were born now. And God has got the greatest story ever. It's called his story. It's called history. And he's going to end this thing with a bang. But he needs his church to connect with him on this. To connect with him. Wasn't he the one in Acts 2 that said, In the last days, saith God, you know, of course, they're quoting Joel. In the last days, saith God, I'll do what? Where? Now, what does all mean there? All. Everybody. Everybody going to be poured out on everybody he's got a plan for everybody but again it has to do with will i receive that will i say yes to that everyone in here everyone watching you are a free will being you have a free will but here's the deal you could yield your will to the will of god and you will never be disappointed how many of you know 
short or long, you've been serving God, and you just say, well, you know, it's just kind of been boring, hasn't worked out, I think I'm going to find another plan. Anybody? No. No, because it goes from glory unto glory unto glory unto glory. Amen? Well, we've been talking about, like I say, the fullness of times. And the Lord gave me something this morning I want to share with you. And, this, you know, <clears throat> nothing gets any more common than a gunny sack, right? Or nothing gets any more common than just a regular crate. You look at that nativity scene right there in front. You know, here God is. His son, the son of God, is born in a barn. And God reaches from the highest to the lowest and pulls everybody in. There's a fullness of time. But you understand that the gift of God was his son. In the fullness of time when he came, you know, I got this gift right inside this box with hay. But what I want to talk to you about this morning is the gifts within the gift. The gift. The gifts within the gift. Now, <clears throat> believe it or not, I really wrapped that my, myself. Isn't that pretty surprising? Yeah. I was still got done. I went, wow. Man, the Holy Ghost helped me. Because I'm just not that good of a rapper. But as, as he gave me this message concerning the gifts within the gift, do you understand God has got things for all of us, but they're contained in Christ. They're contained in Jesus. And religion always kind of botches it up and messes it up. But God wants you, wants me to receive this year the gifts within the gift. And if you've got your Bibles, I want you to open them up if you would. And we're going to start with just a couple verses. Here's one. John 3, 16 and 17. Anybody know that one? How do you remember the day when you'd turn on the football game on a Sunday and they got ready to kick a field goal? And there's John 3, 16, right behind the goalpost, right? It says, for God so loved the world that he gave what? His only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have what? Everlasting life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. And look at James chapter 1. I'm, all these are going to be in the New King James version James chapter 1 verse 17 look what it says this and, and this is how God does things James 1 17 there you go every good gift and every perfect gift comes from above comes down from the father of lights with whom there's no variation or shadow of turning God is the same but every gift comes down from above when he sent Jesus in the fullness of time, that gift that came brought everything. Everything. There's no room in this gift for other religions ever. Why? Because they've already tried that, done that. Done that. How many know, you know, spent some time, we have, we have uh, some families and over in India, you know. Sam Miriam's over there, Mike and Joti's over there, Kevin Cooley. He's got a team over there. When I'm over there, I, I just, I was watching just, you know, I, I, how many here you like to people watch? You like to people watch? I love to people watch. I'm sitting there and I'm kind of watching what's going on in their culture and watching all the confusion. And I'm, in the last, you know, decade, maybe 15 years, I've seen confusion moving into this country. It seems like the further you get, and you know, not real rocket science, the further you get away from the light, it gets darker. Well, there's great darkness there. And I'm sitting there watching some of this stuff, and I'm just thinking, you've got to be kidding me. Well, do you understand that they worship somewhere around 300 million different gods? <sighs> some bigger, some smaller. Some they make up themselves. They're all demons. But the confusion that has come in, see, because that has nothing to do with what God sent. God sent the gift. The gift. And let me tell you, when people that are over there in darkness find the gift, wow, are they happy. Are they happy? Doesn't matter if it's in the Middle East, doesn't matter if it's in, in Asia, doesn't matter if it's in Russia, doesn't matter if it's, in, you know, uh, uh, I had some time to spend with the underground church in, in China one time when I was there. Wow, they're excited when they find out the gift. 
But receiving the gifts inside the gift, there's an act of receiving God's gifts. I was talking to Bryson the other day. I don't know if he's here. Oh, there he is. <clears throat> and uh, I was talking about receiving from God. We were sitting out here and I would prayed for him. He, he, his ribs were sore. And I just, here's the example the Lord gave me. I said, Bryson, <clears throat> I said, when you, when you get ready to run a, a, a pattern, you're going out for a pass. You're getting ready to run a pattern. Uh, what's your favorite pattern? I love his answer. And it was absolutely right. He goes, I don't know. Well, it matters. What, what, what are we doing? It's like, good answer. Good answer. I said, you know, you get in the huddle and the quarterback, he gives it the call and he'll look at you and he'll say, I want you to run this pattern. I want you to come, you know, come to the middle, give a fake and then just whew, flag, flag left or right. Just go. I'm going to throw long. Right now. Could you imagine plays going, man, you do what you're supposed to do and you're running and you're wide open and the quarterback throws and releases the ball and it's, it's right there, right in your stride. You could see it coming, but how many know you got to do something? Yeah, you got to catch it. And I was teaching him that day. I said, listen, when prayer happens, you got to catch things from God. Okay, what, what would you have thought if Bryson's running out there and he's looking and all of a sudden he gets right in stride and hits him right in the helmet. And all of a sudden he goes, no. That's not what you're doing. You want to catch it, Right. See, God, there's gifts inside the gift, but you got to catch them. Is it possible for people to go to church their whole life and not be saved? Absolutely possible. Brother Hagin tells a story about a man that came to one of his meetings. He was in his 70s. He pastored a church for 50 years, a Lutheran church for 50 years. Came to Brother Hagin's meeting and got saved after he retired. 50 years in the ministry and he wasn't even saved. Why? He didn't catch what God had for him. With his heart. Just like you reach out with your hands. And you grab hold of that football. Right? Jesus is the quarterback. He's throwing it. But you got to catch it. You got to catch it. See when he sent Jesus to the earth. There's people that. Oh they saw him. He grew. He walked through town. But they didn't catch anything. Anything that he was doing. Amen. So let's catch some of the things he has. Amen. Let's believe we receive. First one is this. Turn to Ephesians 2 8. Opening up this gift. The gifts within the gift. Look at this first one. For by what? Oh, five, for by grace you've been saved through faith. It's not of yourself, it's the what? See, grace is an absolute gift. You can't earn this, you just got to receive this. You know, it's so interesting because when you understand the grace of God, you don't live in condemnation at all. Because you realize this. I, I know I'm not perfect. I need the grace of God in my life. And so you, you learn verses like this. If you confess your sin, he's faithful. He's just. He'll forgive you and he'll cleanse you from all unrighteousness. So you just blow it. Right? So you go to God and you said, now God... You said, if I confess my sin, I don't say, oops, I don't say, mm, uh, you know, a little gray matter. Uh, 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 I sin, God, S-I-N, and I ask you to forgive me, and I repent right now. And I, I ask you, put it under the blood of Jesus. And you can walk away absolutely as if it never happened. But it's only if you understand this. People say, I don't know if you preach that message to give them license to sin. Hey, they're sitting without a license right now. All right? There's no, 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 no. Grace doesn't give you a license to sin. It gives you an opportunity to be free. But you got to learn how to walk in it. Amen. How many know that probably in my life, in your life, there's some area of your life, my life, we need to change right now. Would anybody agree with that? Yeah. But you're not going to do it on your own. You may be watching and you may be here and you've never given your heart to Christ. And somehow you think that mm, I'm just going to be good enough. You're not good enough. You're not. See, but the gifts are within the gift. It's in Him. Grace is only available because of Him. Let me show you another one here. Look at uh, Romans 12, 3. Look at this one. Everybody say gifts. I love this. Here's another gift. Romans 12, 3.
Romans 12, 3. You guys find it in the back there? For I say through the grace given to me to everyone who is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly as God has dealt to each one a what? See, another thing God gives you is a measure of faith. Everybody, let me say this. Faith is connected to the Word of God like wet is connected to water. Could you imagine some kid saying, Pastor, I'm going to get in your pool today, but I'm just not going to get wet. I'd say, buddy, you're going to get wet. No, no, I just, I, I just, because people say, well, yeah, but what if I read the Word? What if I get the Word of God in my heart and I still don't have faith? That's impossible. Because faith is connected to the word like wet is connected to walk with water. You, you get the word in you and you'll have faith. God gives you a measure of faith. Now here's the deal. What am I going to do with the measure I got? What am I going to do with it? Yeah. If you use it, what happens, Patrick? It grows. Gets stronger. Gets bigger. But you see, I could take this measure of faith and just kind of tuck it in the pocket of my spirit and just say, well... You know, I guess I just got, people do it all the time. Faith should be growing, but it's a gift. Remember, the, remember what we said in Ephesians 2? It says, by grace are you saved through faith. Through faith. It's not of yourself. It's a gift of God. I ask you in the Bible school. It says, okay, by grace you're saved through faith. It's not of yourself. It's a gift of God. I said, what is it? Is it grace? Is it faith? Or is it saved? Yes, it's all the gift of God. Amen. Gifts within the gift. Amen. Sometimes I think we hear these words, and if you've been to church a few times, you know it becomes like some white noise to you or something. It's not white noise. It's not. Faith is a supernatural force, just like grace from God. It's a tangible force that comes to you when you read the Bible. Because Jesus said that my words are, are spirit. Sorry. <laughs> Got to shake it every once in a while. Anyway, he, he said, my words are spirit and they are life. So when you read the Bible, it's, it's not like any other book yeah, you read. Right you know, other books might have men's wisdom in it. And you'll go, oh, that seems to be so. But you know what? I've read in the Bible where God says, you know this proverb that you and your community says? Stop saying it because this is the higher truth. See, God has the highest truth that there is. And you aren't going to get it anywhere else. Can you learn some things? Yeah. By hard knocks? Yeah. But wouldn't it be better to receive the tangible, real force that's invisible that comes to you when you open the Bible and read a scripture? When you do that... Something very real from heaven comes inside of you, and it's called faith. And it empowers you in your being, because you're made to be like God, to be able to walk like God and believe and speak and do what he said to do because of this. And it is a gift of God. Amen. He brought this to us. This came out of him. Amen. Let me show you another verse, how grace and faith are kind of connected. Turn to Romans chapter 5, verse 1. How many have read the whole book of Romans? What a great book, amen? What a great book. You're going to find out as you go through there, Paul's writing to the church at Rome, and there's a lot of things they didn't know. So when you get into the book of Romans, he starts laying out the basics of how this works, right? Look at here, he says, therefore, having been justified by what? Justified means you, you've been made right. You're now just because of what he did. Who have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Now look at this next verse. It says, through whom also we have what? Access. Access. You ever been somewhere where you didn't have the right key, didn't have the right card, you just didn't have access? Didn't have access. You know, I <clears throat> tell the story when I was military police, I was overseas and we were at Fort Polk, uh, Louisiana, and they had war games going on. And our job as the military police, we were... Connect, we were connected to and guarding the war headquarters. So we were the police outside the door. And I don't care if you came and you could have the captain bars on. You could have a full bird colonel rank on. But if your name wasn't on the list, you didn't have 
Didn't have access. Didn't have access. And they'd even test you on that. They'd have a, a colonel walk up. Excuse me. My, my name's Colonel so-and-so. I know who he is. And I just need to get in here. Just a second, sir. No, sir, you're not on the list. Listen, it's really important I get in there. I understand that, sir. But you have no access. You have no access. Because why? The heat, with what's going on in the room, you only want people in there that need to be in there. Right? Do you know that we have access by what? Into what? Into the grace of God. See, but these are gifts. You have access into this grace. It's kind of like, how many here like milkshakes? Anybody like milkshakes? Oh man, Julie, that hand went up really fast back there. You must really like milkshakes. So, so let's say Julie gets this great big, I don't know, Marion Berry milkshake. Is that a good one? I mean, it's large, right? And that's, that's like grace. And somebody hands it to her and says, Julie, this is for you. She, she's doing the, you know, the crazy dance because she's just so excited about that milkshake, right? But you understand, you know how it is, got the lid on there. And she can go around to everybody and say, check this out. I got myself a large Marionberry milkshake. Oh, this is so awesome. And she's showing everybody, showing everybody. Well, that's good. But how many know that right now she doesn't have any access to it? There's a lid on there. What does she need? Here's a straw. That, that's like faith. That's like faith. It says, here's the grace, but it's through faith. She sticks in that great big straw and that's access. See, but all these, these things, grace, faith, they're inside of him. They come out of him. Let me show you another one. Uh, go to Romans 6.23. Romans 6.23. I hear you, woodpecker. I got something for you, too. Yeah, you're starting to get access there. Yeah. How many would like to give him something else besides access? Okay. <laughs> Look at 623. For the wages of sin is what? Let me ask you this. Is it still the wage of sin death? Is it? There's a lot of people who don't believe that. But just because they don't believe it, does that mean that's not true? No. Where do we find this? It's in the word of God. The wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is what? Eternal life. That's a gift. You can't earn this. This is a gift. I don't know if you guys have ever seen some of the things people have to go through in their religions to get what they're looking for in it, what they call eternal life. Crazy stuff. And then they bump into the message in the Bible. They say, well, no, that, that just too easy. That just seems like it's too easy. No, no. We're going to have to earn something on this. No, you can't. You can't. God... He actually captivated all the human race under sin just so he could have mercy on us. Just so he could make the way out. But this, this is something very, very tangible. Eternal life, the word in, uh, in, the, in the Greek is zoe. Zoe. That's eternal life, right? Brother Hagin used to say, it's called the life of God or life the way God lives it. See, when you ask Jesus to come into your heart, what happens is eternal life comes into you. Now, you ask somebody, hey, are, are, are you going you gonna to get eternal life when you get to heaven? A lot of people say, well, yeah. Actually, you have eternal life right now if you believe in Jesus. Why? It's the gift that's come out of the gift. Now, when you receive eternal life, this is what I love about what, what God's doing right now in our discipleship program. You get so much in this thing called eternal life that you got to find out what you got. How many have ever bought like a new car and it had so much stuff on it, it took you a long time to figure out what it does, right? And you ever had one of those where you like had it a year and then, then all of a sudden it's like, wait a minute, it does that too? Yeah. It, then you're, you're fiddling around with it or you have a friend get in. After two years, you have a friend get in and they'll do something. You go, what? But you know, you drove around all the time. It could have done that. Why? It's a package deal. Comes with it. See, when you come into a discipleship program, initially and immediately, what we want to do is show you six of the greatest things that you need to do right now. 
But this goes on forever. And where does it come out of? Eternal life. How do we get it? It's free. By, by grace, through faith, I received eternal life. But again, it is the gift, part of the gifts inside the gift. It's him. Amen. Let me show you another one. This gets better. Romans 5, 17. Romans 5, 17. It says, for if by the one man's offense, death reigned. What one man are we talking about right now? Adam. Adam. One man's offense, fence, death reigned through the one. Much more, those who what? That's a key word right there. Everybody say receive. This doesn't just fall on you. You don't just get this because you come to church. You don't just get this, well, you know, because my grandmother loves Jesus. I'm glad she does. But you don't get this just because you're in the family. You get this because you received it. Just like I told Bryson, man, you've you got to receive it. You've got to grab hold of it with your heart and say, this is mine. Right? Who receive abundance of grace and of the gift of what? Whoa. Now, I tried to write righteousness on this. My wife came out this morning and said, honey, you can't even read that. It's just long. So this says what? Being right. That's what righteousness means. Being right with God. Let me, let me tell you the difference. Kind of an uh, Old Testament, New Testament picture that will help you. In the Old Testament, right? They had the temple. They had the outer court. They had what they call the holy place. Right? They had the, 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 uh, all the showbread table in there. And then beyond the holy place, they had what? The holy of holies. Now, what was in there? Yeah, the ark. You, you could see actually the poles sticking out. There was an actual shear in between. And they'd have an altar of incense that they'd put on there. And smoke would come up in between. And on the top of that golden box where those poles were through, called the Ark of the Covenant. And there were two angels on top of that box. And they're, they're, they were facing each other and their wings were down. And that was called the mercy seat. And the presence of God was right in the middle of the mercy seat. Now. You didn't just waltz in there. There's only one guy that could go in that room one time a year. <laughs> one guy. Who is it? The high priest. He says, and when he goes in, he never goes in without a blood sacrifice. What? To cover the sins of Israel one more year. Not to remit, to cover for one more year. Right? Now, you're not going to find this in the Bible, but you, you find out that history says that the priest, when he did go in there, he had a rope tied around his, his leg. Right? And, you know, he had bells all the way around. So as long as you hear this, ding, 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 that's good. That's good. When you hear ding, ding, that's not good. You guess what they would do? How would you like to be the next guy? James, your turn. <laughs> So the next guy would go in. Now, why? Why? The presence of God is... The, here, here's the thing that people don't understand about God. God is a holy God. Right? He set it up for man to come in his presence, but he set it up. Now, do you guys remember when Jesus was on the cross and he said, it is finished, and he bowed his head, and it says he gave up the ghost? All of a sudden, as his spirit left his body, all the way inside the temple... That curtain in between the holy of holies and the holy place was torn in half from top to bottom. You know why? The presence of God came out. Never to return. Guess where the holy of holies is right now? It's right here. <laughs> right here. But you see, being right with God. I could, you know, why, why would Paul write something like this? Come boldly to the throne of grace. That you may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Boldly. Come boldly in. Walk in like you belong there. You know boldly? Boldly. Like my teenage son and all his friends would open my refrigerator. Boldly. <laughs> you know when John Shuffleby was at my house, right? He knows. He knows he's loved. I mean, what do we, we heard, it was late like two in the morning or something. We heard the refrigerator opening and, Yeah. And he, he found out that there's a, yeah, a big thing of Parmesan cheese. That boy loves Parmesan cheese. 
But you know, boldly, boldly, why? They have access because they're in the family, in the house, access. Why? Because they're in right standing with us. You know, when you come in through the blood of Jesus Christ, the gift, you are right with God and you have access. You're right with God. Now, I'm not, listen, I'm not trying to get right with God. I am right with God. Yeah, but pastor, what, what, what if you just blow it? Are you still right with God? Well, I confess my sin. Fellowship is definitely broken when you sin. Definitely broken. And you need to repent. You need to get in that, you need to get into a healthy, holy relationship with the living God. Because there's this, an attitude sometimes, well, you know, it doesn't really matter. It does matter. This is the guy they, you know, they hauled the priest out by his foot. Same guy. <laughs> Presence was in there. But the difference is how he deals with man. You understand, what I'm trying to, to, to relate to you is even with a righteousness or right being, being right with God, you still need to have a healthy fear of the Lord. Say, healthy fear of the Lord. It's a reverence for God. A reverence for God. Let me tell you, people that I met that don't have a healthy fear of the Lord, they have a very shallow relationship with God. When I meet people, I saw Brother Hagin one time in a meeting. And we were, we, just the spirit of prayer hit that meeting. And he was on one knee up by the altar weeping. Said, Lord, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't do what you told me to do. I'm sorry. And I'm just watching this going, whoa. Whoa. You know why? Because he had a fear of God. Otherwise, you, you're the king. You're the boss. I put you off. I am so sorry. The awareness of your presence in this meeting. That's what hit him. And he's like, I see it. I see it. Lord, I repent. See, what, what caused you to do that? A healthy reverence and fear for God. See, but that, but that right being, I, I don't think God's going to hit me or God's going to come after me or do any of those things. No, no. But as you grow, how many know, even you that have children, grandchildren, as they grow, there's a greater responsibility that you have on them. How many know it's okay to act like a two-year-old when you're two? It's not okay to act like a two-year-old when you're 22. You ever met that guy? I have. It's like, come on, man. All of society, it's not their job to take care of you. Grow up. See, in the faith, it's the same way. Listen, I'm in right standing with God because of the blood of Jesus, but I never forget it's because of the blood of Jesus. It's free, but it's not cheap. Everything. Amen? Let me show you another one. Turn to Acts 2.38. This is on the day of Pentecost. Spirit of God poured out. Peter finally gets up. Begins to preach. As he works his way down in that chapter. You get to the 38th verse. Here's what Peter says to the, the group that's inquiring. They know something has changed. Peter said to them. Repent. Let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. For the remission of sins. And you shall receive what? The gift of what? Right here, Holy Spirit's a gift. Amen. Holy Spirit is a gift. The Holy Spirit is the greatest person you'll ever have in your life on this planet personally living inside of you. You know, how many here, because of your faith, you've ever lost a friend? Okay, raise up your hand. How many lost more than two? More than three? How many lost the whole herd? Yeah, some of you have. But you know what? <clears throat> This person right here will never leave you nor forsake you and be with you forever. Because this Holy Spirit, this is a person. You know, it's not one of those, well, you know, I, I found it. He's not an it, he's a him. Person. But also, it's a gift. The gift of the Holy Spirit. Gift of the Holy Spirit. I remember when I came to receive the Holy Spirit. I'll never forget this. It was March 14th, 1982. It was Sunday night, and I was in a, a DeRitter Assembly of God church in DeRitter, Louisiana. And I'll never forget this, man. I, I, I knew when I, about halfway through the service, I knew this is it. I'm getting filled with the Holy Ghost tonight. I, what, why? What, was God waiting for a special moment? No, no, no. The light came on. As, as Brother Burkeen was preaching, I thought, what? Receive? That's it? I'm in. And I waited. And then I, I waited for the preacher to get done. So how many known preachers sometimes just don't get done? They miss like multiple times good places to stop. 
You know, and I just, I'm waiting in my, okay, he's, he's winding up. Well, I, I'm poised on the edge of my seat. I'm getting to the altar because I'm going to get filled with the Holy Ghost. I'm going to receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Now understand, I'm born again and I have the Spirit in me like a well. But what he was preaching, I can receive the Spirit and it'll flow out of me like rivers of living water. I want that, right? <laughs> so I'm waiting, I'm waiting. And finally, when he gets done, I'm serious. I jumped out of my seat. I ran to the front and I slid into the altar. And the way that I came, I know some of the ones in there thought, what did he do? So I had this guy come up to me. And understand, this is Louisiana, right? <laughs> How many know sometimes it takes him just a little bit longer to say stuff? Uh, not so much anymore, but back then, this was in the 80s, and this guy was probably about 40. And he says, brother, is everything okay? I said, oh, yeah, it's okay. I, I just come to get the, filled with the Holy Spirit. He says, well, let me tell you a little story. And he told me this whole big long story about, you know, he came and he couldn't receive the Holy Spirit because he wasn't good enough. And he shared this whole story with me. And I checked my heart. I always check my heart. And I said, Lord, what about that? No answer. Well, that night I got filled with the Holy Spirit. But the Holy Spirit is a gift. Yes. yes if I, I need to deal something in my heart. I will deal with something in my heart. But his whole story had nothing to do with me. Everybody say gift. Yes. See, the Holy Spirit is one of the gifts within the gift of Jesus. See, in this Christmas season, don't forget, this baby in a manger, and I've said this the last two Sundays, the most terrifying sound the devil ever heard was when God had a baby's voice inside of a manger. Right there, he began to speak, born as a man. All of a sudden, everything changed. Why? Everything, all the hope of humanity was right there in Mary's arms in the form of a baby, the gift. But inside of him was gifts. Amen? Let me show you another one. Uh, go to Ephesians 4, 8. Got two more here. It's probably more than this. I've just got, you know, seven. Ephesians 4, 8. We're going to look at Ephesians 4, 8 and Ephesians 4, 11 and 12. It says, therefore, he says, when he, Jesus, ascended on high, he led captivity captive, and he gave what? Gifts to men. Now, going down to the 11th verse, he starts talking about these gifts. Pull that up. He gave gifts to men. Ephesians 4.11. He says, he himself gave some to be what? Apostles. And what? And what? And what? And what? Next verse. For the what? For the what? For the what? <laughs> Do you notice that he gave gifts unto men, but the gifts he gave to men were men with gifts. Apostolic gifts. Prophetic gifts. Evangelistic gifts. Amen? Pastoral gifts. Teaching gifts. Because one thing you know when you're called, you know, <clears throat> when I knew I was called... One thing I knew for sure, I didn't call myself. Because he was asking me to do something I was totally uncomfortable with. Totally uncomfortable with. Well, you can't earn this. You can't. You, the, the gifts God gives to men are what? Men. There's gifts inside of men. On the staff, we have all kinds of gifts. All kinds of gifts. <clears throat> When you, when you uh, get into prayer with Tim and Marilyn Rockwell, there is a gift inside of them that comes out. Yeah. You know why? Because this is not their first rodeo. When they get in there and start praying, they've been praying. <laughs> and man, when, you, when you're in a prayer meeting with prayers, wow, some things are more caught than taught. And sometimes Marilyn... You know, she'll, she'll be just quiet praying. All of a sudden, she'll say, oh, in the name of Jesus. I think to myself, you better get out right now. Now. <laughs> why? You know why? Because here's what, here's what she does. If you don't understand what's happening, first time you hear that. And she actually told me one time, well, not everybody, church that I've been in, has appreciated this. It's a gift. And what it is, is she got hold of something. <clears throat> gotcha. In the name of Jesus. And all of a sudden, she's not going to let this thing go. This is going, leaving now. 
See, but if you don't understand the gifts that are inside of men, that's why we have a, when Jeff comes in, Jeff comes in totally loaded. He's been with God. He's at, Lord, what do you want to say? What do you want to do? Every, every one of those blast off means a little bit different. You know, has he, has he deposited things in this church? Absolutely. I'm thinking of, you know, Sam and Paul and just different ones. He's had words over, words over, words over. You understand that those words he's speaking at that moment, you may not understand this, and they're going to find this out more and more as they grow. That word has now become a weapon. Because you do warfare with the prophecies that are spoken over you under the anointing by a gift from God. <clears throat> and I'm not, I'm not saying this to be arrogant, but you know that my wife and I are a gift? We are. We are. We're sent here to do what God asked us to do. But as a gift from God, and again, you can't be arrogant about it because you, you, didn't, you didn't give it to yourself. Here's where our whole country has missed it. They said, well, you know, we'll just start Bible schools and educate people into this. You can't educate people into this. You cannot. Now, you can help them, like our Explore Nations. You can help them, like Raymond Bible Training Center. You can, you can kind of direct and help. But you know what? Just because somebody graduates from a seminary doesn't mean they have a gift on them. You know, I started thinking about some of the greatest men that I received from in the, in the faith. And every one of them, almost every one of them have one thing in common. They've never graduated from Bible school. Interesting. But you know what they do have? Gift of God. Gift of God. Prophet. Evangelist. Pastor, or prophet. Yeah, apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher. Those are rising right now. All over. They're rising right now. Not Here's the good news. Not just here. All over the world. There's some incredible prophets, evangelists coming out of Africa. How many remember a guy named Reinhard Bonnke? He's with Jesus now. But he's German. He ends up as a missionary in Africa. God's got a sense of humor how he does stuff. Right? Huge meetings in Africa. Right? And he said this for years. All of Africa will be saved. That's exactly how he said it too. And man, he just started preaching. Now understand, some of those, some of the evangelists rising now there, they were probably in their mama's arms when they went to his meetings. They didn't even know what they got. But you know what? He's a gift from God to Africa. He said one time, you know, he's with the Lord now. He says, when nations begin to march in to the new Jerusalem, he says, I will not be with Germany. <laughs> He said, I will be with Africa. Why? He's a gift to Africa. See, there's gifts rising in this church right now. There's ministers all in this church right now. And some of you, well, man, I, 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 I've tried to find what kind of occupation that I had. I just, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. Maybe you are a gift. I remember in high school, a lot of you, you know, this kind of dates me. They used to have like a big three ring binder and you used to have to go through and occupations and what you're interested in. I remember I went through and I shut the binder and I thought, I'm a bum. There's nothing in here I want to do. <laughs> you know why? Because they didn't have pastor in the book. They didn't have any of that in the book. See, but now it's not only those fivefold ministry gifts. There's gifts inside of each one of you given by God to contribute to a local body. This local body, other churches and other local bodies. Everything we need in the house is in the people. Everything. And boy, if you feel like, wow, Pastor, I just, I, I, I feel stretched right now. Welcome to my world. If you, if you could learn how to live in a stretched state like that, that's God. He's expanding you and stretching you. You're a gift. Everybody say, I'm a gift. Yeah. Last one. Turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Last one. We talked about the Holy Spirit being a gift. But when you get the person of the Holy Spirit on the inside of you, how many know he does not come empty-handed? Verse 4 says, there are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. Next verse. There are differences of ministries, but the same Lord. 
There are diversities of activities, but it's the same God who works all in what? All. Look at this next verse. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to what? Why? See, here's, here's this gift. This is the Holy Spirit's gifts. The Holy Spirit has gifts that he wants you to, to function in and work in. Now, understand, yes, the gifts of the Spirit operate in my life and in my wife's life, but it doesn't operate in my life because I'm in the ministry. It operated in my life before I was ever in the ministry. You know why? Because the gifts of the Holy Spirit, the manifestation of the Holy Spirit is in each one of you. You know, you may have seen my, my friend Joe Metzler here have a word from the Lord. And some of you, you haven't seen him before. Why, why, why does he get to do that? Because I know him. I know him. When the Spirit of God comes on him, he has allowed the gift to operate. So when he has a word, you know, he's not one of those that, well, if I don't get to give it, I'm offended. I'm going to take my ball and I'm going to go home. That's not Joe. No, he'll wait on the Lord. And when he comes, you ever notice that when somebody that understands those gifts gives a word, it, it, it boom, it fits right in with everything that's going on. But yet, he's done this for years, though. <clears throat> Guys, I had one yesterday. Yesterday, we, uh, we Kelly and, and Jasmine, we went through the drive-thru at McDonald's. I just didn't want McDonald's. And so I would go to Jimmy John's. How many like Jimmy John's? You know I mean? Yeah. I shouldn't have said that. You getting hungry right now? I'll let you go here in a little bit. But anyway, I, I, I pulled up to the parking lot, and there was a, you know, to the right, a guy was he's backing out, and I could have just pulled in. But there's this great big Suburban, 1989 Suburban there. And this guy, he could have drove straight in. I thought to myself, that guy needs to park straight in. That thing's huge, right? And if you know the parking spots over there at Gateway, they're just rolls. So I just waved him on. He pulled in, then I went around and pulled in. I get behind this young guy in line, right? We're talking, having this conversation. My name's Kyle. And just having a great conversation, talking about, you know, his truck and just different stuff like this. <clears throat> well, his order, he would called in an order. He didn't know you didn't have to stand in line. You know, they put it on this rack. And so the guy said, oh, yeah, it's on the rack. So he grabs it. He goes to get something to drink. And I, you know, I made mine and I'm waiting. And he heads for the door. And all of a sudden, this unction comes on me. It says, do not let him leave here without giving him information. You know, about your church and you, what you guys do. I'm thinking to myself, ah, oh, that's kind of strange. And then again, do not. Wow, I know, what, I know who that is, right? So I run to the door and say, excuse me, excuse me. Hey, Kyle, could you wait a minute? I'm going to give you something. So I go back to the car. Well, I didn't have my bag in the car. So I would have just pulled a card out. We didn't have a card. So Jasmine, she's getting back there. She finally gets a piece of paper, tore off. And I write down all her information. I just give it to him and says, hey, man, I don't know why. This supposed to give this to you and hey you know i don't know him i just met him in jimmy jones but this unction this word this do not let him go you, you connect with this guy right so here i gave it to him and probably half an hour later i get this text hey this is kyle from the sh with the chevy hey kyle the man sure great to meet you he says you too he said you know talking about meeting can we meet on monday he said, the reason is, is because he said, I'm getting ready to move to Minnesota on Tuesday. And I told the Lord, Lord, I need a sign. I need a sign, God, from you that you don't want me to do this. I need a sign. You know, and he says, somehow I think you're my sign. So I said, yeah, I'll meet with you on Monday. But you understand that didn't come from my head. That didn't happen because I'm a preacher. That happened because I'm open to the manifestations of the Holy Ghost. See, he wants to do more. Not just through me, through all of us. All of us. I appreciate uh, Jared's honesty. J Jared was sharing something. He goes, oh, man, I missed an opportunity today. <laughs> I like that, though. Because when people will share like that, then everybody learns. See, he, he, he walks a lot in this. Walks a lot in this. You know, how many know that if you miss God on that, it's not like he's like, okay, you're not going to listen? Uh-uh. No, oh, Lord, I missed it. Forgive me. No, but you understand Holy Spirit gifts, the manifestations of the Holy Spirit are in the gift. These are not just for a few. This is for everybody. 
as we head into this next year, would you, would you kind of get your brand new Holy Ghost catching gloves on and get ready to catch what God's throwing your way? There's going to be some new stuff. Is new stuff okay? It's not new to God, but it's new to us. New stuff. How many here have ever, you ever taught maybe your little daughter or your little son to play catch like with baseball and you've got a little glove on them? You know what I mean? They got the little glove on. You get your glove on. And remember, you go like, you know, you, you don't just go like this. You, you just, you ready? You ready? And they're like. And you go, okay. And you throw it. Donk. Goes right off their head. Woo! See, sometimes we feel like that when you're dealing with the manifestations of the Holy Ghost. <laughs> but I'd rather leave my glove on, have a few bruises on my head, and learn how to close. Learn how to catch. See, God wants that. He wants to do that in all of our lives. But look at these gifts. The manifestations of the Holy Spirit. God has given us men, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers. He's given gifts inside of you for other people. Just the Holy Spirit, person of the Holy Spirit inside your life. Being right with God. In right standing with God. Being righteous before God. Eternal life. These are all in the gift. Amen. The measure of faith He gives. And then grace he gives. Amen? Yeah. Let me end with this. All churches are like a greenhouse. They should be. Right? And inside the greenhouse is where the plants grow. Right? I'm looking at some of our, our the babies. Right now, you know, I got, uh, we got Tobias and Olive inside the house. They're just little. But man, I look at that and you understand, I remember when like Austin Laird was that big. Yeah, and I've seen him grow, and we've watched this go on now, right? Why? Because he's raised in the greenhouse, it makes a difference. And some of you go like, man, I wasn't raised in a greenhouse. Did it make a difference? Yes, it does. See, look, everybody needs to be part of a local church in the greenhouse. Why? Because the Bible says this. It says the gifts and the callings of God are without repentance. He never takes them back. Never takes them back. Once he gives them, they're yours. They're yours. Can't earn them. <clears throat> Let me end with this. Kevin Cooley said years ago, he, he had this dream. And he was trying to figure out, do I need to go into the ministry? Should I go in the ministry? Should I not go in the ministry? Mm -hmm. He was probably, I think maybe he'd even started Rama at the time. Was trying to figure out, what am I supposed to do? And in this dream, he said, here they are. They're standing, you know, rank and file. He said, it's really weird. <laughs> Things in heaven are different than here. He said, it seemed like that, that there was like a throne that was maybe two miles away, but I could see it like I could see you. It was just strange. And this great big angel walked up like this. He looks around, and this voice, this, this voice says, Kevin Cooley, evangelist. Kevin Cooley, missionary, evangelist, Kevin Cooley. Step forward and receive your award from God. And Kevin said, I'm standing there. Now, in this dream, he said he never, never said yes to God. Never what? Never received it. Did something else his whole life. And he's standing there, and some guy looked over and goes, dude, aren't you Kevin Cooley? He goes, yeah, but I'm not an evangelist missionary, Kevin Cooley. I, mean, I don't know what he did. But. And then the angel, again, said it again. And then the other guy says, hey, aren't you Kevin Cooley? He says, yeah, but you know, I'm not an evangelist missionary, Kevin Cooley. All of a sudden, he said, it's weird. That angel was like two miles away. It was right here. He says, Evangelist Kevin Cooley, step forward and receive. He's like, ah! he wakes up. <laughs> How many know that'll make going to the ministry right there? <laughs> and he did. He did. But my point is, here he is at the end of his life, and he never did it in his dream. I mean, he's doing it now, but he never did it. And what the Lord is saying to all of us today listen, we have a gift called Jesus, and inside are gifts. Let's find out the fullness of what he has for all of us this year. Let's step into it. Amen. The, the word that I keep getting, I'll talk about this next week. Here's the word I keep getting over and over and over. There's change in the air. There's change in the air. There's change. There's change in the air. It's here. It's everywhere. And when he means in the air, he means like right here and then all the way back there by Jen. And everywhere I go, there's change. It's happening right now. It's happening. And he wants us to connect with that. But not, not just some kind of stranger as the bride of Christ, as his lover, as the one that loves God. Step into that fullness with God. Amen?
Every head bowed, every eye closed. Father, we thank you. Thank you, Lord God, for what you are doing in our hearts. Thank you for the gift of Jesus on this Christmas. The Lord, inside that gift is gifts. And Lord, there's just seven I talked about. There's so many more. But oh God, I pray for fullness for everybody in the sound of my voice, whether they're inside this room or whether they're watching right now. But the greatest gift is you. You know, with every head bowed and every eye closed, if you'd say, Pastor, even those that are watching online, say, Pastor, I don't know if I've received the gift, the gift of Christ, the gift of Jesus. I don't know that I've done that. Because until you receive the gift, you really have no other gifts. They're all in him. Every, every one of them is inside of him. But there's such a fullness in him. That when you receive Jesus as your Lord, you invite him to be king of your life. You ask him to forgive you, come into your heart. You receive the life of God. Everything changes. Everything. So with every head bowed and every eye closed, if you're hearing you say, Pastor, I'm not sure. I want to be sure. I want to be sure. If that's you, would you raise your hand up? I want to pray with you. Anyone like that? You want to make sure? You may have been in church your whole life. Anyone like that? I want to pray with you. I want to make sure. We're going to pray with those that are online. So no worries if you're watching online. Matter of fact, we're all going to pray with you. But I want to see if, is there anyone in the house right now? For you that are online, here's what we're going to do. I want you to connect your heart with this prayer. Receive from God as you pray this prayer. Everyone pray this after me. Say, Father, I thank you for Jesus. I believe that Jesus Christ is the gift you sent to the world. I believe he came. I believe he hung on a cross. I believe he became sin with my sin. I believe he died there. I believe he descended into darkness. And he paid my debt in full. I believe he rose from the dead. To give me life. Jesus. Come into my heart. Forgive my sin. Make me brand new. I receive. Right now. The life of God. And I thank you for it. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Listen. Contact us online. There's a couple ways you can do that on there. Contact us. We want to be able to help you. We want to be able to get you involved with that process. That. We'll show you who you are. Amen. Well, guys, Christmas is upon us. Amen. amen. Listen, come on up here, babe. Our, our heart and desire for you is to have a Merry Christmas. We want to invite you all tonight. Make sure that you bring someone with you tonight. Amen. We're going to have a great time also for all, you know, if you have neighbor kids, let's say, and they're not doing anything tonight, bring them. It'd be good for them to see this play. And plus we have a candy bag afterwards. We'll give to them. You want to add anything? Okay, starts at 6.30. Be here. Early to get a good seat. Amen. Stand to your feet. God bless you. You're dismissed. Merry